I'm Sky Shibley of Skyline Type Foundry in Prescott, Arizona. We're here in town this week for the Ways Goose of the uh, Amalgamated Printers Association, a group of people who are dedicated to using these antique printing presses, actually printing on them. I have about 15 of these in various sizes myself, but uh, my main focus is making the metal type that is used on these presses to print from. You'll see that at another point in the film. Uh, we're set up outside in the heat right now, uh, selling our fonts of type to those who use these kind of presses. It's uh, almost a lost art. We're keeping it alive uh, and hopefully carrying it forward to the next generation who will then keep it alive too. We make the type one piece at a time on automatic machines called the Thompson Type Caster, which was patented in 1907. We have several of them in operation. The company that made those it was scattered to the four winds two generations ago, so we have to do our own mechanical engineering. There's no place to call for spare parts. Uh, it takes a lot of imagination to keep them going. Uh, we have very, very high standards of quality control at the foundry. Uh, we have to very carefully align each character onto the body of the type before the production run. Our unit of measure is one-eighth of a point, and that is the equivalent of 17 ten-thousandths of an inch. And until our piece of type lines up perfectly in three different axes to the 17 ten-thousandths of an inch, we do not go into production with that character. I'm, I'm curious how you test that. Is it with traditional tools that were used a century ago, or do you use new, new methods of Checking we the tolerance. have a specialized tool called a type alignment gauge, which is a handheld device. You put your piece of type on it, there's a magnifying lens, and there's a calibrated knob on it that moves a reference edge up and down. And we can use that to compare it to a steel lining standard, which is machined to the ten thousandth of an inch. So we have everything we need to get it perfect. And so we get it as close to perfect as we can, and then we go into production. So we make full type fonts that have 72 characters, there's capitals, lowercase points, and figures. We make lots of decorative borders, we make collections of ornamental pieces, we make decorative initials as well. We have a website, it's skylinetype.com. Just If you just Google Skyline, you'll probably find us. Uh, search engines are so good now. We are one of the very, very few places in the world still making new type for the old printing presses. And demand is booming. Uh, artists are latching onto these old presses, they're restoring them, they're using them, they're creating art with them. Uh, what died out as an industrial mainstream trade has been reborn as an artistic craft. And it's booming. We can't keep up, business is good. Who, who are your customers? Who, who, who are the folks that use your type? We have three segments of customers. The first and biggest is the hobby printers. Someone who has a press like this in their basement, they use it for fun, to create art, uh, maybe do their own little cards or greeting cards or stationery, things like that. Uh, there's quite a good healthy contingent of people in the country and even internationally who do this as a hobby. That's our main customer base. Uh, second base is uh, there are some commercial printers like Firecracker Press, where we are right now, they are doing this commercially. You can come in here and hire them to do a letterpress printing job, anything from business cards up to a giant poster, and they will print this the old-fashioned way, using metal and wood type and hand-carved pieces of wood. And there are very, uh, very few commercial printers like this who still use the, the metal type, and so that's part of our customer base too. The third segment of our base is the institutions that are bringing this back into their fine arts department as an art form. They're getting these old presses like this one or the flatbed presses you'll see here as well. And students are learning in the art department how to make art on these old presses. So we sell to colleges and universities as well. There, there seems to be, I mean I know hobbyists can be passionate about their hobby, but there seems to be an extra dose of passion in maintaining this art form uh, that, because there's, there's, a, there's a big learning curve, I assume, to, to do what you do. Well, there's an old saying about letterpress printing. It's easy if you don't know how. I mean, to learn the basics of composing type, 
putting it on the press, and getting an image on paper. I could teach you that in an hour. But to do it really well, you'd need 20 years of experience. Very, very fine points to get it really good. Do you feel like you are carrying the, the torch from the, from the past century? Does it give you an extra glow when you're doing a good job of making the, the type that you do? Well, you know, I've done a lot of things in my life, for money or for love, but at this point, I have never felt more strongly like this is the reason I'm here, is to be a type founder, to make type. That's my slot, and I just love it. Uh, do, do you use your type? So you, you actually make and use your own type? I do, yes. We print all the labels and the specimen cards for the foundry in my printing shop. I have, As I say, I have about 15 presses that I've collected and restored over the years. Everything from one you can hold in the palm of your hand up to a, one even bigger than this that rests on the floor and weighs 2,000 pounds. We can only cast type for which we have the matrices. Now, a matrix, plurals matrices, is a little brass tablet about the size of a postage stamp. And engraved in that is one character of the font. As I mentioned, a typical full font has 72 characters, capitals, lowercase points, and figures. So we work from a set or a font of matrices, 72 different little brass planchets with each one having one character engraved into it. So we take one matrix, we'll put it in our casting machine, we'll take some proof casts, we'll measure it, calibrate it, get it exactly aligned perfectly on the, with respect to the mold, and then we'll start production and we'll cast that character until we have enough to make up however many fonts we're doing. Then we go to the next character. So to cast a full font, there are 72 different production runs which takes a long time. It's a very labor-intensive operation. So, we cannot cast unless we have matrices. Uh, there were many thousands of matrices made over the years for the industry. And I have collected up matrices whenever and wherever I can find them. I have one of the largest matrix libraries in existence now. We can cast over 3,000 different fonts and 3,500 plus uh, decorative borders and ornaments. But we have no way of making new matrices. If someone wants to get a new, newly designed typeface cast into metal type, we do not have that capability. Uh, it can be done, and we're looking at that very closely. But that would be a whole different craft. We would have to uh, get a, a, a machine that can engrave the character very, very precisely in these brass planchets. Uh, and then we'd have to do 72 of them to get one single design in one size. So a whole lot of work there too. And it can be done. The machinery is available, the knowledge is available, but we're right now we're just going with the matrix library that we have. Maybe someday we'll, we'll expand into the uh, arena of making new matrices. So what's, what's popular? Traditional fonts from you know, a hundred years ago, or what, what, what do your customers want? Some of our designs go back hundreds of years, like Kaslin, for example, is one of the oldest typefaces that's still in use. Uh, we have typefaces in matrix form that were designed in mid-20th century, which is just about when this industry dropped off precipitously. So there's a, a whole range. Most of our our matrices are from the first half of the 20th century, when this kind of thing was mainstream industry. Well, I assume when your customers bring in their finished products, that you would take special pride that your, your uh, type is used in making these beautiful objects? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I love it when people, when my customers send me things they printed with Skyline type. It's like getting a letter from my kid at camp or something. I love seeing what people do with it, and they get so excited about the type, and they're, they're so creative with it that I just feel great about being part of that process. What, what part of the work that you do? I know you, you maintain your machines, you have to actually make the, the type, you probably do some research, you, you do, and then you, you have customer relations, but is there something that stands out that when you get out of bed you go, hey, this is going to be a good day because I get to do what, 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 you, what, what drives you? Well, every day is a good day. 
Uh, the whole thing is a challenge, one big challenge made up of a multitude of little challenges. And the challenges pop up instantly. Like if a machine breaks, we have to stop production, figure out what broke, why, how do we fix it, how do we stop that from breaking again. And so you really have to do a lot of thinking. There's a lot of monkey puzzles to work out, as it were. Uh, we have to spend half our time actually producing and the other half being mechanical engineers to keep these machines running properly. And I like that aspect of it because it's a challenge, it's a mental challenge. Um, I have had a multitude of challenges in the 14 years we've been doing this. Um, challenges in every imaginable way, mechanically. And it gives me great pride to say that we have yet to encounter a challenge that we have not overcome sooner or later. At times it gets very frustrating uh, to, to try to fix something and nothing works or it breaks again. We don't know why. We don't understand why it's doing that in the first place. We don't know why our fix isn't working. Some days are better than others. You know, some days we work just fixing things and trying to get it work, working right in the first place. Other days, it's a smooth, all day long production. We're making beautiful, shiny new type, and life is sweet. But it's all good.